Hi everyone, welcome to THT and today we have another exciting deck tech video. Today we're going to be talking about a deck that is radically different than anything else that currently exists in Star Wars Unlimited. It is what I like to call the Dominatrix Iden deck, uh, the deck that will make you suffer for a very long time before you finish, finally just die by yourself. And this deck is the most controlled deck you could possibly play in Star Wars Unlimited right now. Um, it's, as you can see, a deck that plays almost no units. It has a radically different approach uh, from the game than any other deck you've seen before. If you thought that the Krennic Green or the Aiden Green that you've seen so far were control decks, you, ha you have not seen anything yet. This deck is really, really very controlly, completely reliant on answering the opponent threat. So, uh, this deck was basically developed by um, a player called Ko, a French player, uh, who actually made a top 10 in the massive 222 London tournament a uh, couple of weeks back. And uh, so he had a pretty strong showing uh, with this tournament, and since then he's been continuing to play uh, the deck uh, uh, in tournaments in his local scene in Paris, that has a, an extremely active um, scene, as you can expect from such a big city. And uh, he's been having some very good success with the deck. He's been winning tournaments after tournaments, and uh, he's been, of course, improving the deck. Uh, I also got the occasion to play with him, to play with the deck, and to refine it a little bit. So this is not his version of the deck, it is, this is my own version. Uh, but obviously he uh, uh, gave me a lot of inputs and really helped me developing my own version of the deck. So um, thank, uh, thanks him, th I would like to thank him for of course all the help in trying to, to develop the, this deck and of course help me better understand what the archetype is, is, is about because it is very different from anything else uh, I've ever seen. So what is the goal of this deck? Well, the goal of this deck is to uh, stall the game uh, to the point where uh, by answering uh, the opponent units by just playing the removal. So you're going to be killing unit, unit after unit, stabilizing the board until you reach the point where sometimes things can get a little bit out of control. You will basically stabilize the board either with a bombing run or super laser blast, most likely super laser blast. And then from there, you're going to start to take over the game because you're going to stop resourcing, you're going to keep answering uh, everything he plays. Drawing two cards per turn, you've got plenty of, uh, of gas to answer, to keep answering everything you do. And at some point, you're going to reach a point in the game where that, that player does not really have much card left in his deck. And you can just use Vigilance to mill the opponent out. So the win condition in this deck is going to be Vigilant, out of aspect Vigilance for 6 resources. And this card is at the same time going to be a tool for stabilizing the game. And also a tool to mill your opponent out. And um, you've probably seen uh, people control decks starting to play Vigilance in their deck as a way to help in the control mirror, as a way to kind of mill out the opponent in the mirror match. Uh, this deck, obviously, Vision is very strong against control in this deck, but it also is a win condition uh, against every deck. Like, even against the Boba, you're going to be most likely, you're going to be winning simply by just playing, by milling out your opponent. So, you are basically winning by exhaustion. You are winning by your opponent not being able to put uh, threats that can deal, and the, uh, the threats on the board, and you not being able to answer them. And the way it works mathematically is that our deck basically doesn't play any units. It's actually the the most the, the fewest units you could that 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 of any deck. And the idea is to basically make the opponent removal pretty much useless because all of your units uh, you go, uh, are either going to be like things to block you or things that are actually removal. So for example, Papatine is not a real unit. It's, it, it is a unit, but if he comes into play, kill a bunch of stuff, it's already done its job. So what I mean by this is that the deck is very much making the opponent removal useless. Um, and the way that works mathematically is that if a good portion of your opponent's deck becomes useless, and you guys both draw two cards per turn, 
eventually that player is going to be left with a bunch of useless cards in hand while every single card in your deck is useful to answer whatever threats you're going to manage to play. And you end up in that situation where your opponent just has a lot of cards, useless cards in hand and you've managed to answer all the threats. Also the buff spells, so for example stuff like Surprise Strike, and so those cards are only usefully managed to stick something in the board and the whole point of this deck is to make is to literally answer absolutely everything that could be played so for this uh, deck we are playing Ident Versio uh, simply because it's, it's quite obvious right if you're playing a, a deck that does not run any unit uh, obviously Krennic becomes useless, useless so in that context obviously being able to to heal throughout the entire duration of the game every time you kill something is just extremely useful. Um, Iden as a unit is kind of cool if she can stick to the board and, and, and stay alive for a couple of turns and give you a couple of life. That's nice, but obviously the most important thing for about Iden in this deck is their ability to just continuously heal. And obviously the heal of Iden can become very powerful, especially if you play very long game, which is exactly what this deck is trying to do. Um, so it's a very, very useful uh, asset uh, to be able to continuously heal, heal yourself throughout the game. So um, we're going to go about this. So this is kind of the global idea of, of the deck, right? So uh, answer the threat one by one, phase one. Phase two, stabilize the board with a super laser blast, a bombing run, or a palpatine. And phase three, uh, keep answering everything your opponent, your opponent plays until you reach the point where you can play Vigilance mail your opponent out and win the game. So that's basically what this deck is all about. Um, so um, now that we've had the global idea, this is basically kind of like a rundown of the, the, the why we play different cards. So basically in red are more the anti-aggro cards, the yellow cards are more like the anti-boba cards, and the, and the blue cards are kind of our, our, uh, what we rely on on the control matchup to, to, to win the control matchups. So as you can see, and things that is not highlighted are just generally useful cards. Um, so as you can see here, uh, our deck is almost mono blue uh, because it makes charge senses better and simply because the best control tools are in blue, but red is not useless. Uh, red is very important actually to help in our aggro matchup. Uh, if we didn't have access to red, our, our deck would be terrible against aggro. So that's why we, we, we play red. Um, so uh, this gives you like a idea when you see like two co different colors. I mean, the, the, the card is equally useful against Boba is against control. I mean, obviously this is a simplification just to give you kind of a, a framework on what we're playing. So um, now that you have a global idea about the deck, let's go into the card per card analysis, starting with Aiden Versio. So uh, Aiden is um, so Aiden is uh, basically of course our leader. She, her ability is like she taps, and when she does, she allow you to heal one from your base if uh, a unit has been defeated. There's two ways to use her ability. The first way, of course, is to just heal, and the second um, uh, way to use this this ability is to uh, basically pass uh, the turn without passing really and seeing what your opponent plays, and you can answer. And if you're in the past, then you can still have the opportunity to play something. Not something we do very often in this deck, because if your opponent plays nothing, likely we have nothing to do, because this deck is purely reactive. Um, another, um, the cool thing about uh, Aiden in this deck specifically is, of course, the fact that I think it's by far the deck that uses Aiden's ability the, the best. And one of the cool things about the, her is that we have so few things to play, this deck has a very easy time retaining the initiative. And I mean that often we can actually use Hayden, uh, uh heal, and still keep the initiative because we have basically no action to play. Like, it's a deck that is extremely passive. So we have very often we have the ability to retain the initiative almost at all time in this deck. It's it's very hard to not have the initiative in this deck. Once she's deployed, uh, basically the the deployment on Hayden, uh uh, we don't necessarily look to deploy her on turn 5 because often at this stage of the game we're trying to set up uh, a super laser blast so usually a den deployment is going to be done after the super laser blast has been played and uh, and this way this gives you kind of a, an extra unit that allows you to give you 
an extra an extra unit an extra thing to uh, to take advantage of the game once the game has been stabilized obviously there's going to be situation that you're going to be put under a lot of pressure and in this case you might need to deploy Aiden on turn 5 or on turn 6 uh, because you're going to need that extra heal you're going to need that extra unit that can kill stuff and and things like this so this is basically for the leaders so for the base we are playing Kestrel City and the reason is because we need the, uh, the 5 extra HP, especially against aggro. Tarkin Town is not great in this deck because you're not, we're not really damaging units most of the time. We are just outright killing them. Uh, there's no circumstances in which a unit would be damaged really without us being able to finish it off. So Tarkin Town is not very useful. We have no way to really damage partially units. I mean, there's a few ways you can do it, but it's not, it's not very, very often the case. And the 5 extra HP is far, far more valuable. So, do not play, uh, do not play Tarkin Town in this deck. Really play Castro City. It's just much better. Castro City or the other one. Let's go now into the early game cards. So, as you can see, our deck is not playing any real two drop outside of Inferno 4. And the reason being is because most of the time on turn 1, we want to take the initiative so then we can kill whatever comes out. Uh, with the initiative and we have tons of removal spells that can kill stuff on turn two power the dark side open fire make an opening we play all nine of them and also some in some situations false choke and in some situation entrench even though we do not ideally want to play entrench so early in the game inferno 4 is really the only real turn one play and actually in a lot of situations we don't really actually play it on turn one turn one Usually we would only play Inferno 4 on turn 1 if we have the ability to retain the initiative after. So if we have the initiative, we play Inferno 4, we play a threat, and we, we keep the initiative. But yeah, that's that's really what we're, we're looking to do. Inferno 4 in this deck gives us a little bit of ball presence, that's nice. But the main purpose of Inferno 4 is the when play, when defeated ability that allows us to basically look at the top two cards in our deck. Uh, and put that at the top of the bottom. This gives us more chance to basically d look for Super Laser Blast. This deck, more than any other deck in the game, relies on Super Laser, Super Laser Blast to stabilize the game. So we need to find ways to to kind of give us more chances to draw it. Of course, most of the time we can delay the game enough so we can find it, but Air Inferno 4 is very helpful with this. Next, we got the classic Force Choke. Force Choke is mostly a card that we want to play against Aggro. It's simply a way to, to deal with large threat early on in the game for a very cheap price obviously very good against control making opponents draw a card is a big deal but um, obviously staying alive is even more important it's very good against boba as well as it gives us to one shot the boba dis disintegrator uh, uh, really strongly damages uh, the boba leader so we can finish it off with something else it's a just a very strong card next we got entrench so entrench is probably one of the best card in the deck uh, so Entrench is in this case used as once again a removal to prevent your opponent from attacking our base. Uh, the reason why Entrench as a removal has been overlooked a little bit uh, since the release of the game is because it doesn't really combine very well with Power of the Dark Side because the way that works is you play Entrench and then you play Power of the Dark Side and your opponent can simply sacrifice the unit that is Entrenched. But in this deck it is really really amazing uh, because usually we're going to be playing Power of the Dark Side early on in the game to uh, while we're going to be running Entrench in the mid portion of the game to basically get uh, st um, prevents a very large unit from attacking us and then we're going to sweep the entire board with it with Power of the Dark Side as uh, so with, uh, with a Super Laser Blast and after the Super Laser Blast we can simply just resume going back to playing Power of the Dark Side so Entrench really helps in that critical portion of the game uh, in the in the, in the mid portion of the game to really deal with very large threats. So this is an excellent answer to Boba Fett Leader. It's an excellent answer to Fire Spray. It's one of the best cards, especially against Boba. Of course, it's very good against uh, all the, the large cards. K2SO um, basically allows to, to... It's very good against K2SO. Obviously, if you play this on K2SO, do not play any unit because otherwise your opponent will uh, attack that unit and deal overwhelm damage on you. But that's the good news is that we don't play... We basically don't play almost any any ground unit so that's just an amazing amazing card that allows us to stabilize the board and it's also very good against um, uh, it's a great answer against uh, uh, Relentless 
Uh, some people against you might be siding in some relentless entrench is a very good answer to that. So all this is very helpful. Obviously, there's going to be some situation where you can also play it on your own unit. It can be very useful to keep an Aiden alive for a longer time and allows Aiden to actually kill larger units. Um, and keeping an Aiden alive means that you're going to be healing a bunch and that's going to just, just going to be tons of value. This is honestly one of the best cards in the deck. It is really, really amazing. Next, we got a couple of Cloud City Guard, which is mostly here for the for the uh, for the aggro matchup as a way to once again stabilize the board, have some Sentinel to slow down the opponent, deal a couple of damage to it, and this buys us enough time for us to find the bombing run that we're going to need to sweep the entire board. Sometimes it can be useful against Boba as a way to once again buy us off a little bit of time before we play Super Laser Blast, but um, most it is mostly an anti-aggro card. Next we got some make an opening, which is excellent against the shielded unit. So we're gonna see the crafty smugglers, all the um, uh, all the seventh feet defender, a very good way to deal with them. Also any unit that basically has less than than two health. And in this deck, in the con this control deck is really about having the right answer to the right threat, and obviously having a diversity of answers really help us finding the ideal answer to everything, and really help us. Uh, it really help us to, to stabilize the game uh, so we can buy ourselves some time until we reach the point of the game where we're going to be dominating. Open fire is another very flexible answer, deals a lot more damage, can target space and ground. It is, in my opinion, one of the biggest reasons to be playing the red version of the deck because having those super flexible removal like this is very useful. Power of the Dark Side obviously is um, obviously a, a super strong card in this deck, as you can expect. And we are obviously running it to kill very large unit in situation where there is nothing uh, weak to sacrifice. And this deck plays so many removal spells, very often we can just kill a smaller unit and then kill the bigger one with Power of the Dark Side. Then we got Lieutenant Shalsense. You might be a little bit surprised to see this card in a deck that does not... Uh, that is not a mono blue deck, but uh, as you can see, we are playing mostly uh, blue card. There's actually, I think, uh, 9, 12, uh, there's only like 15 non blue cards in the deck. Uh, so, obviously, if you resource the non blue cards in order to optimize Shalson, Shalson can very easily be a 5 5 or a 6 6. We basically almost skip our turn 1, which means that when we reach the turn 3, assuming we play one card on turn 2, when we reach the turn 3, all we have to do is resource our cards that are not blue and then play Shalsen and Shalsen will very easily be a 6-6. Six, six. Uh, Sometimes be a 5-5 five, five because there's a, a red card you want to keep, but even for, for as a 5-5, five, five, Sentinels for 4 is still very worth it. The card is very, very worth it, even as a 5-5. Five, five. So the goal of this card is going to be, once again, stabilizing the board, uh, prevents your opponent from attacking us and buying us a lot of time for us to reach the moment where we can play Super Laser Blast. If your opponent doesn't deal with them, you can just attack units and 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 kill them. It's just an excellent, excellent card in this deck. Uh, this is the the probably the biggest improvement that I've brought to the table uh, after the version that Co was was running. We we basically I basically run that card and it's been very successful for me. It's really an excellent card in this deck. Imperial Interceptor is once again another answer to threat, comes to play, kills a, a space units and give us a 3-2 that can be used to kill something else or put a little bit of pressure. Typically we don't try to attack the base ever with this deck because we're not really trying to win by dealing damage. Uh, we would much rather take the initiative than dealing so 3 damage to the base, 90% of the case. Of course, if you've got nothing, if it doesn't cost you anything to attack the base, you can do this, but most likely we're going to be fighting for initiative, so we do not want to attack the base ever. That's not really what we're trying to do in this deck. Uh, we're really not trying to, to win by killing the opponent. Normally we're just going to try to milling him and, 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 and run him dry. And that's exactly what uh, Imperial Interceptor does. Uh, and uh, an Imperial Interceptor obviously helps with this. Obviously, um, take down. Uh, we're talking about having some of the best removal spell in the game. A removal uh, event in the game. Uh, takedown is one of them, so we obviously run three takedowns. Bombing run is obviously excellent in this deck because since we're not really running any units on very few of them, 
this is almost going to be only three damage to the opponent unit and not and not our own. Uh, this card is mostly useful against aggro, uh, who's going to be running a lot of small units. Kills the the the, the echo base defender, kills the the battlefield marine, kills all the the, the Sabine and all that stuff. It can also be run in space to kill the the the, the, the X wings, the the A wings, and uh, and the red three. Uh, really a great game stabilizer against aggro. Aggro is one of our weak matchup, and that's the reason why we run the three bombing run in the main deck, even though this card is not so useful in the other matchup. Obviously Vanquish, very important against Boba and against Control. Against Control, of course, answering the big late game units that the opponent is going to play against us. And against uh, um, uh, Boba, it's going to help us answer the big vaders and uh, especially the the fire sprays. So vigilance of six, we already talked about this. So this is the out of aspect card that we're running. This card is uh, the ultimate win. Con it is the win condition for the deck. Uh, if we're running against uh, uh, control, we're going to be using it exclusively to mill uh, to mill our opponents. That's the most important card uh, in the deck. If you're running against control, never resource that card especially against control. Um, so we're mostly going to be healing and milling against control. Against aggro, it's not it's not a bad card. Once we manage to stabilize the game, we can use this card to kill a unit and heal our base to put ourselves out of range from for a cause I believe in. Uh, against aggro, we can mill sometime, but obviously that's not really our main, the, the, way, the way we really win the game. Against aggro, most likely we're going to be winning the game just by attacking with a unit and stabilizing. Um, but it can happen sometimes if the game goes very long. Um, against control, uh, sorry, against um, uh, Boba, the card is not bad either. Uh, can be used to kill a unit without caring about the shield. So kill the the the, the seventh feet defender, the shielded seventh feet defender, shielded sm crafty smuggler, and heal the base at the same time. Sometimes we use the if we feel comfortable, if we feel like we've stabilized the game, we also usually will mill the opponent to kind of make the game a little bit shorter and try just to 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 win faster. Next, we got Super Laser Blast. Super Laser Blast is uh, the most one of the most important cards in the deck. I think this deck would not exist if this card was not a thing, and it obviously allows us to completely stabilize the, not completely, but it allows us to completely reset the board and um, and um, and put ourselves, if our manage, man, opponent managed to overrun us, no, not only by deploying his leader, in the mid portion of the game, the, the, this is the, the, the moment of the, of the game where this deck is going to struggle the most, because that's the moment where your opponent gets to deploy his leader, and he has obviously going to be have a strong power spike. Super Laser Blast allows us to reset that position, if we can stall the game until the point where we get to 8 resources, Super Laser Blast is an amazing reset button. We do not want to sideboard this card out in any circumstances. It is good in all matchups, and it is mandatory in all matchups. And we want to draw this card uh, uh, in every game, if possible. And that's why we play the uh, the Inferno 4 to kind of dig for it. Obviously, this deck is not a ramp deck, so it's going to take us at least uh, until turn 7 to draw into Super Laser Blast. So we are very statistically likely to ha to find it. Uh, try to never resource Super Laser Blast unless you really have like a bunch of them. Against aggro, it's not as useful, I guess. But in any other matchup, basically never resource Super Laser Blast. It's, it's really is amazing. And uh, here you have it. You got the uh, card by card analysis. So um, now we're going to talk about the different matchup for the deck. Starting by the aggro matchup. So the aggro matchup is by far the most difficult matchup for this deck. And the reason is because uh, we have all the tools to stabilize against aggro. We have life gain, we have removals, removal, a wide diversity of removal. We have sentinel units that are very large, like child send, very, very big unit, very good against aggro. But the problem is that the deck takes a very long time to kill. Which means that it gives plenty of time for the aggro deck to find, for a cause I believe in, to find ways to uh, prevent, to to um, f find a way to basically finish you off. So the main weakness of the deck is its an ability to kill quickly. So against the aggro matchup, our main 
uh, focus is going to be after sideboard is going to be trying to counter the four cards I believe in. For this, we're going to be uh, adding two repairs, which are basically reverse four cards I believe in. It almost undoes the damage that a four cards I believe in does, which is very useful. And regional governor, which is an excellent card in matchup because aggro don't run any removal, especially after sideboard against us. And uh, we play regional governor. We can name for a cause I believe in, or anything that deals direct damage. And uh, suddenly uh, the opponent does not have the ability to finish us off, which is extremely useful. So regional governor is an excellent answer uh, to that in the matchup. Obviously, we don't want to, we do not want to play this card early on. Uh, against aggro, typically the plan is going to be you're going to be skipping your turn one because you do not you do you never want to let your opponent have a wing. Like let's say you play Inferno 4, your opponent plays A-Wing, and then your opponent plays Wing Leader on A-Wing. If if that happened, you've lost the game. Like unless you got you find an entrench, it's it's it, the deck has no way to kill such a large unit uh, backed up with a Wing Leader because the uh, and you're gonna take ton of damage, you're gonna lose. So very much you wanna skip your turn one and and play a removal on turn two. It's it may sound counterintuitive, but you always wanna skip your turn one against aggro. Uh, and make sure that you answer whatever threat they have as they happen. Um, that's why we are signing out the Inferno 4, because really having a turn 1 play in this matchup is really not, not that useful. Especially a turn 1 play that is completely unable to kill anything. So, uh, we're signing out the Inferno 4, we're signing out the Vanquish. Vanquish is, is basically only useful and worth playing against, uh, against a Garia attack pod. So, uh, we keep two Vanquishes. And we'll still have, of course, the Entrench to deal with the attack pod. Uh, but we don't need more three of them. And Kondoku, not very useful. It's very expensive. Only kills one unit. The body is not super useful. So against aggro, it's not a great card. That's basically the plan against aggro. So the plan against aggro is answer every single threat. Play a bombing run to stabilize the board. Uh, to stabilize the board. Uh, live gain, live gain, live gain, live gain while killing the opponent threats and then try to lock the game with a regional governor naming for a cause I believe in, keep answering the threats and then eventually win uh, with either, there's a different way you can win in this matchup, you can either just play a Palpatine and then uh, and then just swing with the Palpatine and, and kill the opponent. It can happen quite quickly because in this matchup the, 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 the Sabine deck is going to be using Sabine's ability often so he's going to deal himself a lot of damage, and he also only has 25 HP base. So in this match, I'm most likely going to be winning just with like a, a Palpatine that just attacks, um, uh, attacks into the base and finish the game. You can sometimes win with the meal as well, but in this match, I'm most likely. So as I said, in really this match, the biggest weakness is your inability to win quickly, um, which may, can make things very very difficult. In the Boba matchup, as you can expect, we don't really change a lot of things in this matchup because we are very much pre-sided versus Boba. We're already playing the three make an opening. We're already playing all the anti-Boba cards in the main deck, so we don't make a lot of change. Bombing run is not very useful because uh, Boba units are either shielded or have a lot of health, so bombing run really doesn't accomplish much. We still keep one just as an option. And then we add in a national Kondoku, which is not bad against, against Boba. It's a 5-4 that is not so easy to kill for him. Uh, that can uh, kill some Bobas. Uh, the Boba Disintegrator uh, is an uh, entering battlefield effect and is when playability, sorry, can can kill once again, 7th Speed Defender goes through the shield can kill a Crafty Smuggler through the shield as well, so that's that's useful. And um, and then we got an, uh, a copy of Avenger just as an additional option. It's not, those are not amazing card against Bobas, but they're they're basically better than the bombing runs, so that's why we add them in. So as I said, our deck is very much already pre-sided against Boba. So the Boba matchup uh, so uh, is from from what I've, I've seen is looking like a 50 50 percent it's a 50 50 um, one of the big assets that this deck has against boba is that it makes all boba removal re use like like for example I, I never thought I would say that one day but in this matchup uh, overwhelming barrage is a bad card like overwhelming barrage barely does anything so there's like a lot of cards in the boba deck that kind of become useless all those units with Ambush, for example, the Bosk, the Vaders. Like, Vader is good because it has two threats on the board at once, but, like, the the, the, the the Ambush is basically useless. So, it's it's kind of like, you there's a lot of stuff 
in the boba deck that kind of becomes useless because you're playing so few units. And by the way, if you're running in this matchup, you might want to keep the Cloud City Guard as an option, but Cloud City Guard most likely you're going to be resourcing them very aggressively. You do not want to give any units to opponents to kill. Another cool thing as well is that if there's no unit to kill, Boba ability is basically useless as well. So you're rendering Boba's uh, leader's ability pretty much useless as well. And once again, you got all the removal that you need to deal with the fire spray, to deal with the Bobas, like the entrance are very useful in this matchup. Uh, you reach the super laser blast, and usually what happens is that the Boba deck is not really fast enough to kill you before you're able to stabilize. And once you've basically managed to stabilize, the Boba deck is going to draw a bunch of useless cards, it's going to draw a lot of removal, it's going to draw like buff spells. Even the, 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 the cards that are traditionally very powerful against control, for, for example, Change of Hearts, uh, this change of heart is not very good against us. Like we, as I said, we don't play any large unit that in which is very useful. So you might say, well, now you're adding an adventure, which is one of the best change of heart targets in the game. Well, as I said, we're, we're adding in adventure just because it's better than bombing run. But obviously, if you're playing against Boba, you're going to be expecting the change of hearts. Do not play avenger if that puts you uh, in range of a change of hearts, or if you have no an a way to answer change of hearts. So obviously that this is a because most likely in this matchup you're going to be winning with a meal. So Avenger is just an additional option, but it's not really your win condition. So whenever you rely on Avenger as a win condition, then a change of heart is a problem. But if Avenger is just an additional option that you most likely not going to play, and you're most likely going to win just by milling your opponent with visions and answering the threats, that's that's usually it's going to happen. So your opponent is most likely going to concede the game before that happens. So in my opinion. Uh, the matchup is, is pretty much like a 50-50. I'm saying 50-50 because even despite all the qualities that this deck has against Boba, uh, and I think this is a, a strong argument for me to play this deck, is is that it, it does pretty well against Boba. Um, with that being said, Boba is still Boba. Boba is still sometimes going to overrun you if the Boba deck is able to ramp with a, re with a resupply uh, and to overrun you with multiple fire sprays. Uh, there's not really much you can do about this. Uh, but that's the case for every deck in the game, so there's not much you can do. Another cool thing about this deck is that Super Laser Technician is almost useless against you. Like, Super Laser Technician um, does not actually ramp, because you're not playing any unit you crash into, and Boba has no way to kill his own Super Laser Technician, which means that Super Laser Technician is just gonna gonna stay there and and not do much, and then you're simply gonna kill it with a with with a with like a super laser, when you reset the ball with super laser blast, and that's gonna be about it. Uh, so, uh, th which means that if uh, Boba wants to ramp against you, he, st he specifically needs to draw uh, to draw the resupply, which is kind of a big deal. Uh, next, this is uh, our sideboard against control. So against control. We're going to be putting a few more threats, some Avengers, some Komdokus. Once again, those are not really key cards in the matchup to win, but they are better than they are better than the Cloud City Guard, the Bombing Run, and the Repair. So, don't rely on those cards, really. Those cards are just additional options you can have. But the real star of this matchup is going to be Restock. So, the Control Mirror is a very weird matchup. The idea in this matchup is to basically just answer everything your opponent does, because he's playing a control deck, he's going to have loads of removal spells that are basically useless. And as he basically play the few threats that he has in his deck, you're simply just going to answer the threats. He's going to go to super late game, you're going to play your Vigilance, and you're going to mill out your opponent. So, restock is the key in this matchup because, uh, especially if you play against another control deck that also plays Vigilance, that's also going to try to mill you out, then it's basically mill versus mill. And whenever you are in a mill versus mill scenario, or a vigilance versus vigilance scenarios, the player who wins and the player who has restock. And that's why we had the restock. So how does restock work? So basically the way we use restock is we're going to be restocking uh, our vigilance, our card back into our deck, in order to make ourselves more difficult to mill. But more importantly, what is very interesting about restock is that whenever you play restock, uh, you can actually... Uh, put at the bottom of the deck the restock itself because when the effect resolves the restock is already in the discard pile so you can play restock and place the restock back into the deck and obviously you should always do that so you can restock 
indefinitely. You're going to redraw your restock, replay it, and you can you are basically unmillable, uh, which is pretty much game ending. Unless your opponent manages, the only way for opponent to deal with this is by either playing a regional governor and name restock, which is very easy to deal with. All you got to do is kill the regional governor, and that's it. Or the other way to deal with this is by simply um, uh, milling the restock. If he plays the vigilance and mills your restock, then then you you you're screwed. This is the reason why we play two restocks, because then. Uh, the chances of us being the restock being milled out is divided by two. We have two chances of being able to draw our restock without them being milled out. Obviously, there's going to be games where you can get where you can be very unlucky. That's why I say it's a very weird matchup because it really relies on this very weird uh, interaction. And then the good thing about restock is like you can play the restock and then you can place back the two restock back into your deck, uh, back into into your deck, and that's obviously going to be amazing. So restock is just incredibly useful uh, in uh, against all the control deck that will play that will play um, uh, vigilance and this matchup is all about answering the threats and playing the vigilance and the way that works if you're playing against a traditional control deck like an Iden green or something like this the Iden green is going to have a lot of threats um, um, that are going to become so you're going to have a lot of ways to 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 answer the threats uh, because you're playing more removal, and uh, it's also going to have a lot of removal, but the removal of items are going to be useless against you because you're not playing any threats, or like you play very few threats. So basically, what happens is that the item on the other side is going to be left with a bunch of removal that he cannot use, and you're going to be just very efficiently removing everything he does, reaching that super late game situation, and then because you play three vigilance and two restock, you're going to win the game. So that's obviously why this deck has a very strong matchup against control. So that's basically it for the for the for the deck. So if I had to say yeah this deck has basically good matchup versus aggro. Uh, so bad matchup against aggro, decent matchup against Boba like 50-50 and against control it has about um uh, it it has a very good matchup against other control deck, especially control deck that do not run vigilance uh, and restock. Um so that's basically um, uh, it for the for the for the entire list. So there's a couple of like interesting kind of fun fact about Aiden. Uh, if you have, I just wanted to let you know that if you have an Aiden in play and you play Super Laser Blast, you actually get to heal uh, from the unit being killed. So let's say the three opponent units and Aiden play, you play Super Laser Blast, even though you are killing your own Aiden, you're still gonna get to heal three from that. So that's an interesting thing to know. Um, so yeah. Um, now that we've done, uh, we've said all this, uh, we're gonna go into the uh, the the mulligan plan. So let's go into do a couple of mulligans. So for example, uh, so we're gonna talk about this hand against aggro, this hand against control, this hand against midrange. So against control, uh, against aggro, this hand is excellent. We're gonna be skipping on turn one, uh, having uh, an open fire. Uh, or make an opening for a, a turn two threat. Uh, we're typically going to resource the Imperial Interceptor and maybe the Cloud City Guard. A takedown is an excellent answer against uh, against uh, Sabine. And then once we reach the late game, we'll be very happy to get that bombing run to to kill multiple units. Bombing run is really the key card against uh, one of the key cards against aggro. Against mid range, uh, against uh, Boba, this end is uh, as a make an opening. Uh, to answer early game threats, so open fire, make an opening. This basically answers everything we would want. Um, uh, bombing run is not as good, so we'll be risking the, the bombing run. We saw the Cloud City Guard. You do not want to play any units against Boba because you do not want to give your opponent an opportunity to use the, the Super Laser Technician. You don't want to give your opponent an opportunity to kill something with Boba and get to untap his resources. So we're going to be playing as few units as possible. We're going to resolve the Cloud City Guard. Uh, guard. Maybe we'll also resolve the Imperial Interceptor depending on the situation, and then we're going to be relying on those to, to stabilize the game. Against control, this end is not great, because it doesn't have a vigilance, nor uh, a vigilance, but against, uh, and, and the, the threats are, those cards are very bad against control, so most likely we'll mulligan this hand against, against control. Okay, so this thing is pretty good against, against aggro. Uh, against aggro, we'll be, uh, we don't have to skip a turn one, uh, we can just pass. Let your opponent play a threat and then full stroke that threat. Um, 
uh, super laser blast, you never want to resource that, just under no effect constant. And we also have a bombing run, so uh, if the, the to answer the ground ball, we can use the we can rely on the full stroke to rely on the space board. Uh, we can uh, we can play rely on the bombing run. Repair is always a great card to get aggro. So against aggro, most likely we might actually resource the super laser blast because we have a bombing run, so uh, it's okay. And then maybe we'll wrestle the, Imper the Infernal 4 against Aggro. Those two cards maybe against Aggro. Against, uh, against Boba, this end is very good. We can play Infernal 4. Infernal 4 is a fine turn 1 play against, Bo uh, against, uh, against Boba. We wrestle the Repair and the Bombing Run. We'll play the Full Stroke if anything on the ground is scary. Um, it's not as good as the first hand, but I think it's pretty decent. And uh, here, this hand, uh, how do we work this out? So, I think if you're playing it Aggro... It's uh, it's not as verse. It, uh, we skip turn one, play open fire on anything that comes out, uh, and then we can uh, against space. We're very good, but on the ground we're a bit weak, so it's not super balanced. Uh, but of course we got plenty of time to draw more cards, so that's uh, something to keep in mind. If we mulligan this against aggro, okay, a lot of uh, this is not great. A lot of uh, red cards, not really very synergistic, which are sent, but that's okay because we can simply just go resource those two cards. Uh, play a full stroke on turn 1 to deal with a unit and then we have no more red units, we can play the, the Chalcen it's not great but it's 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 definitely playable so we see it's it's very hard to do mulligans uh, uh, it is because it really depends on the matchup, it depends on, on really a lot of factors uh, but you get what I mean if you're playing against, uh, uh, you're trying to find the answer that are appropriate for the matchup it is probably one of the, in my opinion, one of the most difficult deck to play because it is a completely different mindset than any other deck you've probably played before. It requires a very deep knowledge about your opponent's threat, what kind of card are you expecting to see, what kind of card are you trying to play against, and uh, what are the kind of removal spells you're going to need depending on the matchup. It requires a very deep knowledge of the opponent's deck, more than any other deck in the game. Um, so it's a very difficult deck to play. Uh, it's also a deck that obviously is very time consuming, so if you're playing to, into a tournament, uh, with this deck, uh, you do not want to go into a draw. So there's different two strategy: is either you try to win game one, and then, uh, and then, uh, if the other the, the next game goes to time, you you win the game, um, or you're gonna try to 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 win 2-0. Uh, because winning to the one gonna be difficult. It because games are very long with this deck. With that being said, games are very uh, long, but turns are very quick, because there's very few units on the board. Uh, so you're going to be playing a lot of turns, but the turns are going to be very quick because the board is going to be very empty. Um, obviously, it's a deck that uh, play this deck only if you're very, very comfortable. If you start slow playing with this deck, you're never going to finish a game. So you need to play very quick. Uh, you need to get through the motions very quick. And uh, you need to know the deck inside out. So then you play very quickly. And you also need to be very mindful at the speed your opponent is playing. For example, if you see your opponent taking a very long time to take his turn despite the board being completely empty you can call a judge and you can say well can you please go uh, faster a little bit I mean that's only do only do this in like a very high stake tournament don't do this in your <laughs> weekly play but um, uh, be mindful of the time that your opponent is spending especially if it disadvantages you uh, slow play is forbidden by the rules so if you see opponent taking very long time despite having there's absolutely nothing on the board uh, that is a little bit suspicious so be very mindful of this. And um, if you're playing against this deck, actually do not drag out the game too long because uh, don't let don't wait until you see how your opponent actually wins the game. Uh, when I'm playing this thing against this deck, I will concede once I see that I, there's no turning back. Uh, if you're new to a turning card game, you might never give up and, and fight to the bitter hands. But that's actually a very bad idea to do this against this deck because what's going to happen is... You're going to lose that game, uh, and then uh, on the second game, you will never have a chance to play another game. Uh, so do not do this if you're playing against this deck. Do not try to to fight into the bitter end, even though you know it's desperate. Uh, because this deck will take a very long time to finish you off. So you are really wasting yourself precious time that you're going to need to be able to, get, to win the game 2 and possibly win the game 3 afterwards. So uh, big advice here on, the, on this. So... Uh, a cool thing about this deck, obviously, it's a, it's a it's relatively budget. Like as you know, it does not run uh, any Boba, doesn't run any uh, any uh, Vader. 
it doesn't actually run any card that is very expensive. I know Vigilance has gone up in price a lot uh, because now we see a lot of control deck want to play Vigilance. So, but basically outside of Vigilance, the deck is very cheap. Even, by the way, the Avenger guys, if you guys do not want to want to play a slightly bu more budget version of this deck, you don't have to run Avenger. Like, Avenger is really not mandatory for this deck. It's a strong card, but it's not like... Um, uh, it's not like super mandatory. Uh, you don't like really need the card to really to really uh, to really for the deck to operate properly. Vigilance, however, is very much mandatory. By the way, I just realized I completely forgot to talk about Palpatine. So Palpatine is sort of the barrage for the deck. Uh, yes, it gives you a 6-6 overwhelm, which is nice, but most likely you're going to be using this unit to to kill other units, not to actually put pressure on your opponent base, even though that might happen, especially against aggro. But it's most likely just a unit that comes to play, kill a bunch of stuff. Very good complement with Super Laser Blast. And in my opinion, Palpatine is the strongest reason to be playing, playing, uh, uh, playing, um, playing red. Uh, Palpatine is also an excellent answer to Fire Spray in the later stages of the game. So that's uh, that's why I I laid this card in yellow as an anti boba card, even though it's not really an anti boba card really. But it's it's really just really good against Fire Spray. So thank you so much for following that video. Uh, if you have any questions about the deck, uh, please let me know. And I think it's a very it's a very fun deck to play. Not so much to play against because obviously it it, it is basically answering, but it's very different from anything else you've played. Uh, so if you got any question, please let me know. And uh, see you next time for another video.